Hey, what's going on guys? EP09Fitness back here with another video, and today I'm going to give you the second half of my top 10 predictions for the Olympia. I gave you guys my first half yesterday, so today we're just going to get right into it. And we're going to start off with Derek Lunsford. I think pretty much everybody has Derek Lunsford in their top 10 at this point, and understandably so. I mean, Derek has got a lot of anticipation from a lot of the top guys in the industry. Everybody has high expectations for him. And I think he's going to meet those expectations. People aren't just talking about top 10 for Derek, they're talking about top 6. And judging from what we're seeing in some of these training videos leading up to the Olympia, I don't think he's going to disappoint anybody. You know, there's talk of Derek actually beating some of the best guys out there, like Nick Walker. They're saying that Derek could beat Nick Walker. Uh, Ronnie Coleman said that Derek could win the Olympia, you know? And hey, maybe he can. I guess we're going to find out soon. When it comes to completeness, that's where Derek really, really shines. Derek is so complete. There's nothing that's out of proportion whatsoever with Derek. Even if one could say, you know, maybe his back might be a little bit too big or too wide as compared to his arms and the back shots. I don't think so. I really don't. Derek pushes himself really hard. In fact, I saw a video that Derek put out today at five days out on his YouTube channel and he actually spoke about how he needs to learn how to pull himself back from training too hard at this point. Hani Rambot actually told him that he's got to start pulling back just a little bit leading up to the Olympia and a guy like Derek who just has to actually pull himself back absolutely crazy. So Derek Lunsford top 10. Next up we've got Hadi Chupin. I think everybody would also agree that Hadi is a pretty easy pick for top 10. But you know, Hadi hasn't been without his controversy this year. It was earlier in the season where people were saying that Hadi had a lot of oil in his shoulders and that it was throwing off his symmetry and it just looked really, really weird. Some of the update pictures that he did post a while ago, eh, it, it, it really didn't look like his shoulders were going to be, you know, proportionate to the rest of them. His shoulders did look weird, but I don't think that they do now. I don't know what he did or didn't do. I don't know, but I think he's at a point where he's lean enough from some of these updates that we're seeing that we can definitely say that Hadi is going to come in with just as good a shape as we've ever seen. He's going to come in just as big, just as lean, but is he making improvements? You know, that's my question. Hadi is so consistent. He's one of the most consistent guys out there. But we haven't really seen improvements, I, I feel, you know. When he did the Vancouver Pro there uh, a few years back, everybody was so blown away. That, uh, in my personal opinion, that was his best show to date. But not to say that he's still not top three material, because he is. He's consistent. But is it enough to move up this year? I've, I've got my questions when it comes to that. I'm just not sure. When you see these other guys that are making big improvements, and, you know, Hadi staying... I don't want to say the same, but close to the same. I don't know. But either way, Hadi Chupin, top 10. Next up, Nick Walker. Yeah, you guys all know that I got Nick Walker in my top three. I've got no problem saying it. Actually, when we get close to the end of this video, I'm actually going to put my top 10 list in order for you guys. So stick around for that. But yeah, Nick Walker. Nick Walker has made more improvements, I feel, than anybody. And Nick is still training super hard. Super hard. These videos are from eight days out. And look at the vascularity. Look at that. I know that Matt Jansen finally got to see him in person, you know, within the last uh, couple of days. And I know that they upped the carbs. And you can tell, they, you know, it looks like they upped the carbs. Nick looks so full. He looks full as a house. And the vascularity. And, you know, it just... Look at the way he's pushing. He's pushing hard, man. This guy knows that he wants the title. I think he wants the title more than anybody. I really do. And I think that he's got the best shot at it. If anybody is going to challenge Rami for that title this year. Yes, you definitely have Brandon Curry there. I don't disagree. But if anybody is going to push this year, it's going to be Nick Walker. So Nick Walker, top 10. Next up, William Bonac. You know, a lot of people have William Bonac in a lot of different placings this year. Some people have him in his top six. Some people have him in their top three. Some people have him in his top two. Some people have him outside the top ten. 
You know, I wonder why there's so many question marks behind William. Is it because he had a couple of seasons where he really didn't show up? He seemed to fix the problems that he had. His gyno issue, he fixed that. Everybody said that he looked a little bit smaller in the legs, and it seems like he fixed that. But you know, the one thing that I'm not sure about when it comes to William, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but William in particular just finished hosting his own show over in the Netherlands. Here's some footage of William for where he was actually over in the Netherlands December 11th. It was just yesterday by the time I filmed this video that he was on stage in the Netherlands at his own show. He, has, he still has to travel to the US. Pretty much everybody else is, as far as I know, has either been in Vegas by now, if not there for weeks or months. Is that going to affect his conditioning? How does William travel in the past? Can anybody give me any insight on how William has traveled in the past? Does he usually cut it this close? I, I don't know. I just hope that all the travel doesn't end up affecting his ability to really come in as conditioned as he knows he can. And as conditioned as we expect as fans. And I really hope that there's no travel disruptions. My god, that would be a travesty at this point. You know, one thing that William's actually been doing is he's been training in big, heavy sweaters. He's got some Instagram footage here where you see him training in a big, heavy sweater. He's sweating hard. He's, he's really breathing hard. And the reason he's doing that is so that he can get conditioned for the weather in Las Vegas. Now, I looked it up, and in the Netherlands right now, it's about 1 degree Celsius. In Vegas, it's about 11 degrees Celsius. So that's not too bad, but I've seen training like this before. I think it does help, even if it just helps his mental game, then that's enough. But either way, William Bonac, top 10. So who's gonna be the last guy in my top 10? Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Hunter Labrada? Eh, no, I think Hunter slipped this year. I don't think Hunter's going to be in the top 10. What about Charles Griffin? Charles Griffin's looking good. Charles actually came out and said he's that he's faced this his entire career. You know, Charles used to being the guy that nobody talks about. Is it going to be Charles? Uh, maybe in a different lineup in a different year. <laughs> you know what? Maybe. But for the last guy in my top 10, I'm going with Samson Dowda. Samson Dowda. He's just too big. He's too full. He's looking too good. I mean, look at the size of this guy, man. He's incredible. He's going to be probably the biggest guy on that stage. I mean, if Samson ends up standing next to Big Rami, we're really going to know how big he is. But is Samson going to get there? But he is. He is big, man. He's big. And he's proportioned. And it looks like he's on track. It looks like his, uh, looks like his condition is right where it needs to be. You know, I really get like Cedric McMillan vibes from Samson. The way that he poses and just the way that he kind of does his turns and he says posing is an art. I mean, some of these poses, I mean, these are definitely Cedric McMillan poses. We're going to miss Cedric at this Olympia. Absolutely. But yeah, Samson, top 10. Some people have Samson in their top 10. Some people don't. Most people do. I mean, he just looks incredible. But he doesn't have that track record yet, so I think that's why people may have him outside of the top 10. But for me, Samson Data, top 10. Now to end this video, I am going to give you guys my list of the top 10 and how I think they're going to finish. Now, again, you guys know how hard this was for me to come up with, but I really, really think that if it's going to go any way, that this is the way it's going to go. Now these predictions, I'm going to say, are a combination of how I think the judges are going to score this competition, but also how I would like to see it go. So I'm, I'm kind of in between those two. So for my top 10, in order, I'm going with first, Big Rami. Second, Nick Walker. Third, Brandon Curry. Fourth, Hottie Chupin. Fifth, William Bonac. Sixth, Ian Valier. So I got Ian moving up a spot. Seventh, Derek Lunsford. In eighth, I've got Michael Crizzo. In ninth, I've got Samson Dowda. And in tenth, Andrew Jacked. So let's see, guys. We'll see if I'm right. So that's my top ten. Thank you, everybody, again for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe.